China recently announced it would not accept lower grade plastics for recycling. It sent cities everywhere yeah. scrambling. Most face the prospect of sending more plastic to landfills. Not the city of Boise, though. Nope. Six on your side's Roland Barris is here to explain why in tonight's big story. And yeah, Michelle, thanks to an uh, arrangement with a special company in Salt Lake City, Boise may actually recycle more plastic than ever before and perhaps help change the world in the process. I just want to say one word to you. When The Graduate came out way back in 1967, plastic was a punchline. Are you listening? Yes, sir, you. Yeah. Plastics. Dustin Hoffman's confusion was understandable because plastic was in its infancy. There's a great future in plastics. Turns out the joke was on us. Plastic is now in everything. It's so hard to get away from plastic. It, it really is, even if you're trying really, really hard. The problem with plastics is they're everywhere and they don't decompose, which means they fill up our landfills and end up poisoning our waterways. It's getting into the fish and it's, it's making its way up the um, food chain and eventually it impacts humans as well. But where some see nothing but environmental disaster, MIT graduate Priyanka Bakaya saw opportunity. How long does it yeah. take to go from this to this? So it's roughly an hour. Bakaya's company, Renewlogy, can take all types of plastic and literally melt it in an oxygen-free environment into diesel fuel. You're not adding or removing anything from the plastic, you're just taking it back to its basic molecular form. Um, and you can do that in a very efficient way. The proven clean technology is proprietary and relatively new, but it came just in time for the city of Boise. And we talked about that in August when it happened, that if things really start to transform with plastics in China, this could be a solution. When it starts in the spring, the city will send its plastic to this plant, but eventually Renewlogy wants to bring the plant to the city. We really think the key to making sure that this becomes widely adopted is doing these sort of smaller modules that can be co-located right at the waste site. Imagine a plastic conversion franchise at every recycling plant in the country. Certainly if this is successful in bringing these materials to Salt Lake City, there is an opportunity to potentially have a unit here in the Treasure Valley. There is competition, but Renewlogy says it's the only company that can make scaled down plants the size of a tennis court. And now that every city in the country is having to find a new place to put its plastic, Renewlogy says there really is. It's a great future in plastics. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> well, meanwhile, if the city ever wanted to buy its own tennis court sure. sized facility, uh -huh. uh, it would take apparently about three years to pay it off. And then after that, the fuel that comes out of it becomes a regular source of revenue to the city. That makes perfect sense to me. Of course, my mm -hmm. question is how much fuel can they actually create? They get a lot, which really? is really interesting. Out of uh, 10 tons of plastic, which you would think is an awful lot, it adds up very quickly considering how much plastic is out there. You get 60 barrels of diesel fuel that can go huh. right into a diesel engine. Plus, of course, they have natural gas that comes off the process that can be used to actually heat up the next batch of plastic that can be turned into fuel again. So it just keeps going. Cycle. Why send it to China? Why send it to China indeed? Send it to Salt Lake and okay. maybe to Boise one Maybe day. to Boise. <laughs> Thanks, Roland. Thanks.